Oscilloscope measurement resolution is determined by many attributes in an instrument. As some scope vendors are offering higher bit analog to digital converters and scopes, questions start to rise about do you need more bits, or do current techniques prove adequate? In this video, we will teach some best practice techniques and compare resolution performance of a Tektronix MSO 5204B and a Keysight DSO S804A. Let's begin with a few simple best practice techniques for maximizing resolution and scope performance. The first one is preparing the scope. Make sure it's warmed up. Had a recent self-calibration, probe compensation has been performed. Next, when a signal is displayed, make sure you're maximizing the displayed signal on screen. Doing so optimizes the signal coverage into the ADC and improves the number of used digitizing levels. Next, depending on repeatability of your signal, you can choose different acquisition modes to reduce noise. For single acquisition, high resolution mode is great for reducing noise and increasing bits of resolution. For repeatable signals, averaging multiple acquisitions is a good alternative. Limiting the analog channel bandwidth also reduces noise and helps increase the signal to noise ratio. Lastly, using a variety of math filtering or smoothing techniques can be effective. Tektronix scopes come with a wide variety of filtering capabilities. All these options optimize resolution and help you get the best performance of an oscilloscope. The device under test we'll be making comparisons with is an inexpensive power inverter used to power electroluminescent wires. It has different flash modes that output high voltage bursts. We picked one up at a local electronic store for this demonstration. In flash mode, the inverter outputs different burst modes with a 650 volt peak to peak signal measuring just over 100 volts RMS. We'll compare the two scopes ability to capture a small signal in the presence of a large one a very common application for high resolution requirements. We'll also use the techniques mentioned earlier to demonstrate some of the scope's abilities to increase resolution. It's important to compare both scopes with similar setups and importantly similar vertical and horizontal setups. Since the Tektronix scope has 10 vertical divisions and the Keysight scope has 8 divisions, keeping full scale settings will be important. Note, with the standard passive probes, the Keysight maxes out at 49.9 volts per division which is about 400 volts full scale. Yes, this is a limitation of that scope, and yes, it clips the signal. So to show similar setups, we set the Tektronix scope to 40 volts per division to get a similar 400 volts full scale. We need to turn off roll mode and turn on a hold off trigger of 300 milliseconds. This sets the scope to always trigger in front of the large burst packet consistently. We set the sample rate to 2 million samples per second to match the S-series scope which changes your horizontal settings when the math channel is turned on. Uh, this 2 million samples is enough to clearly characterize the high voltage bursts. It's also well below half the max channel sample rate and can take advantage of high resolution mode. From the techniques listed earlier, we want to optimize the vertical resolution, so we need to double check we're using as many of those as possible. We're already vertically scaled, and the signal of interest is repeatable, so we could use high res or averaging. We could also apply math filtering or smoothing techniques. Since the ADC is always running at full speed and we selected a sample rate well below the limit, we can take those extra sample points that would normally be decimated and average them into a single acquisition, effectively smoothing out the points, reducing noise, and enhancing the resolution of our signal. This technique is done in hardware. It's fast and effective. We're going to use high resolution mode because we want to show we can capture the small signal on a single acquisition. So let's turn it on. The point of interest is just before the beginning of the burst packet. Let's zoom in on it. All I need to do is click and drag, then select zoom 1 on. As you can see, high res improved the resolution and reduced the noise. As a result, the resolution was increased over 12 bits and can identify the small few volt ringing right before the on-screen high voltage burst. The same signal is being probed on the Agilent Keysight S-Series scope. Remember, this is a new 10-bit ADC scope, so we should be able to see more resolution. Similar to the setup of the text scope, we have the horizontal time and sample rate set up. Vertically, we're limited to 400 volts, meaning 38% of the signal is clipped. The probe is rated for 300 volts RMS, and the signal is only about 100 volts RMS. So we'll compare this limitation. We can set the 300 millisecond trigger hold off to keep the signal triggering in the same location of the burst. Let's zoom in on the small ringing now. Notice how the scope doesn't have vertical zoom. We're limited to two options. One rescales your vertical horizontal setting, and the other is a horizontal zoom. 
In order to have a vertical zoom window, I need to set up a math function to see the point of interest in the presence of the burst. The vertical zoom, I need to set up a math function and magnify duplicate the signal. This setting allows me to adjust the vertical scaling. At the same time, adjust my horizontal settings, which is not ideal. Remember how this is a 10-bit ADC scope. We're supposed to see more detail, but all we see here is noise. That's because the noise is high enough to hide the details you would expect to get from all those extra bits. On the text scope, we used high resolution mode, a boxcar averaging technique to reduce the noise and see the signal of interest. On the Agilent Keysight scope, we'll need to use the same approach to see the same signal. Let's go into their acquisition menu and turn on high resolution mode. Notice how the noise is reduced. The signal comes out of the noise floor and resolution is increased. This waveform looks pretty good now. In fact, it looks just as good as the Tektronix scope. Another Tektronix technique for making high resolution measurements involves using Tektronix world-class performance passive probes that come standard with many models of our oscilloscopes. These probes have twice the bandwidth of competitors' probes and under half the capacitive loading, taking advantage of a custom ASIC chip leading to amazing signal integrity. In fact, for those interested, there is a similar 500 MHz 2X probe. Less signal is attenuated, so you get a better signal to noise ratio with better resolution than the competitor's 10X probes. Adding a second probe to the display can be powerful. This method sometimes relies on overdrive recovery, but for this demo it doesn't. With two Tektronix probes attached, you can quickly capture the full signal of interest on one channel and the area of interest on a second channel. Remember, two tech probes is less loading than one competitor's probe. To demo this, I've attached and turned on channel 2 with a TPP 1000 1 GHz probe. Once both channels are scaled, we can see both the full signal on channel 1 and the small ringing on channel 2. Seeing these two parts of the same signal can maximize the resolution potential of areas of interest. Comparing the tech scope captures of single probing and double probing techniques compared to the Keysight scope, notice how both were able to measure a few volts in the presence of a large voltage with the right resolution techniques. Remember, the Keysight scope was not able to acquire 38% of the waveform with standard probes. Both scopes were set up to match this limitation. We saw that noise can often be a limiting factor as well. Making high resolution measurements, in both cases users have to take steps with both instruments to condition the signal. Remember, the techniques listed earlier. They'll be key to your insight of capturing high resolution signals. Scopes are complex systems and measurement resolution is determined by multiple elements of the system. Consider the whole system, along with all the features of the instrument, not just one single specification. For further questions, let a local sales expert demonstrate the capabilities or call a local application engineer in one of your many support centers around the world to answer your questions.